Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. Today in this video, we're just going to be talking a little bit of Grappling 101 in Street Fighter 6, the art of the throw. So to start off at the most basic level, I guess let's start it out here, right? There's throws. Everyone can throw. And a certain few elite few characters have command grabs, which are basically throws, but better, right? And what's the point of the throw? Well, I'm probably not going to tell you something you don't already know, but just in case. Throws defeat defense. If someone is overly defensive, they're blocking everything you got. The throw says, nah, I'm not too worried about that, and chuck them on their head. And once again, command grabs, throws but better, usually doing more damage than the base level throw. So in this video, we're going to be covering a fair bit of topics. Uh, one thing I do want to get out of the gate, though, is how to do a 360, because I still see people struggling with this. So if you know how to do a 360, you can just move on to the next section. I should have this all time stamped for you. But if you struggle at all, or if you're wondering the secrets, because the 360 is not a true secret, now is the time to learn. So you can see my inputs here are on the side, right? And I'm going to tell you the secret, because once again, the 360 is not a true 360. You do not have to go from up to back to down to forward to up again. Uh, some people say it's a 270, and actually it's not even necessarily a 270 anymore. So here's what you need. You need a back input, you need a down input, and you need a forward input, and you need any up input. It can be diagonal, it can be straight up, doesn't matter. So think of it like this. A 360, a spinning pile driver or Mexican Typhoon as it is in this game, right? The only inputs you actually need are back, down, forward, up. That is it. And they can be in any order too, by the way. Like I can go down, forward, back, up, and it'll still connect, right? But yeah, basically think of it this way. It's half circle forward plus up or half circle back plus up or up forward or up back, whatever works for you. So if you can play Manon and you can do her grab with just half circle back, it's literally the exact same thing except hit up plus punch at the same time. It's the exact same motion as this, except just hit up and punch. So I can hit half circle back here, up punch, I get my thing. And once again, I can do a diagonal as well. So I say I hit half circle forward this time, and I'm gonna hit up forward at the end, right? So half circle forward, up forward punch, and it works. So that is the secret of the 360. You don't gotta do a whole giant rotation. You don't even have to do a full 270. Just half circle forward or half circle back, whatever works for you, and up and button at the same time. And then bingo, bango, bongo, you have a 360 pile driver. And you can make these inputs work in any way you want. It doesn't really matter. But that is the secret to the 360. That is why, in case you were ever wondering, why people aren't jumping. Uh, they can just, you know, walk forward, get it, no big deal. This is why we can do it this way. So if you didn't know, now you know. So now let's talk one of the core building blocks of grappling in Street Fighter and in a lot of fighting games in general, honestly, and that is enforcing what we call the strike throw mix up where I'm going to do something to gain some advantage frames. And then you immediately have to guess, am I going to throw you or am I going to hit you? So for a basic example, let's take Zangief's headbutt. Like if it hits awesome, right? We get a combo, but it's a slower move and it's probably not always going to hit like, you know, probably going to get blocked. But the beauty about it being blocked, if we turn on here now our handy dandy frame counter, which you should always have on, it's very helpful. If this move is blocked, we can see here we have advantage for frames. So what does this mean in reality? So say here Manon is going to mash after the headbutt, right? But we're advantage here. So what does this mean in reality? It means if I hit buttons first, I'm going to win. It's kind of how that works, right? And eventually people are smart enough. You know, humans are pattern based recognition animals, right? Okay, this move, every time I block it, my moves don't come out fast enough, right? So I'm gonna stop just hitting buttons and I'm gonna start blocking. And to that, once they stop hitting buttons and they just start blocking, you as the grappler say, thanks, idiot, and then you command grab them. That's how that works. And point of fact, uh, many situations where the strike throw mix exists, you are usually advantaged enough that you can just go for the command grab right away. So once again here, the headbutt, Mano is going for stand light punch. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go for the grab right away. Screw it. And I'm going to win because my grab starts up in five frames. So it doesn't matter. I'm plus four. There is no strike you can do that's fast enough to beat me out of this situation. So now the actual guessing game is, OK, I'm screw hitting buttons. Now in this situation, do I jump or not? That is the actual guessing game we're now in. Now jumps 100% of the time will beat my command grab. That is just how that works, right? And not only that, if they call me out, they're going to be able to land on my head and get a punish because that's the nature of the jump. 
So now the strike throw mix is okay. You're gonna try to jump out of my grab and now I'm gonna stop you from jumping because I know you're not gonna be blocking. You're gonna be holding up, up back, up forward something, maybe back dashing. You're gonna be doing anything other than trying to fight back properly. So my job now as the grappler is to stop you from jumping. So what am I gonna do? And it basically wraps around back to the beginning. If you're gonna jump after the plus on block move, then I'm gonna hit you and go for some kind of combo, right? That's kind of how it is. That's the basics of it. And that's kind of long and short of her, a lot of the characters. So like Lily, if you block Enhanced Condor Spire, she's gonna be plus one. So then it's immediately guess, am I gonna get grabbed? And if you do get grabbed, then well, you get grabbed. So I'm gonna try to jump out. And if you try to jump out, she can just go for lights and combo you out. Someone like Honda, who's not even a traditional grappler, stand medium punch is plus one on block. So if you try to hit any buttons after the fact, he's 100% gonna win every time. So you can't really mash out. And once he realizes you're no longer gonna mash out, then it's time for you to get dunked, right? Now, Mano herself is a little bit different because she can't enforce it that way. She has literally no plus on block moves other than like whatever you do from a drive rush. So her way of doing it is catching you with neutral buttons. So if you get caught, say, by Stand Fierce Punch, you'll get put into that vacuum effect. And then it's effectively the same scenario from here. So she'll be advantage three frames. You cannot hit any button to beat her buttons. So therefore, you gotta accept it and block, and if you accept it and block, eh, then you're probably getting grabbed, right? So it's all about just getting a few frames of advantage. For Lily, it's as simple as just getting one singular frame of advantage, but that's enough for her. And then it puts people into that strike throw mix-up blender. They just gotta start guessing. It's a very, very powerful technique, so keep it in mind. Now, let's talk quickly about throws and punish counters. So all throws, Normals get a massive damage boost if they're a punish counter. So say normally a regular throw for most of the cast is gonna be 1200 damage. And if you catch someone with a punish counter, it's gonna be over 2000 damage. That's a significant boost. Command grabs do not gain that same level of boost, but they still gain a boost nevertheless. So here we go. This is a heavy Mexican Typhoon. 3200 damage. Normally it would be 2800 damage, right? So that's good. So anytime you catch someone parrying or maybe you block a dragon punch and looking for a punish, keep that in mind, you'll get a big damage. Now, for the main grappler characters specifically, in a lot of cases, the heavy grab might be your best punish. So Lily, 2,800 damage, right? Like, let's take a standard punish scenario here, right? Block the big uppercut here, let's get some damage in. And it turns out our damage is 2,800. So it's not even as much as just going for the grab. <laughs> like, yes, uh, in the case of Lily specifically, we'll gain a wind clad stock, but if I wanted to do more damage in the grab, I actually have to start like spending some resources, right? Uh, so drive rush, maybe, maybe uh, add a super at the end of a combo, something like that. But for the most part, uh, just going for the grab is actually gonna be the most damage if you're just mid-screen, don't wanna burn it in the extra. This is extra the case for Mano. If you have full metals, Unless you're like in the corner and willing to burn some supers, you are not doing more damage than this. This straight up, this is over 4,000 damage. A lot of combos like need super, like a level two or level three to approach anything like this, right? So if you're in that situation with same man, no, like honestly nine times out of 10, the grab is gonna be your best punish. Forget doing a fancy combo. If you already earned the medals, like those two grabs by itself was 85% of your life, right? Like. So just keep that in mind, right? Sometimes you don't need the fancy combo. Sometimes the punish counter command grab is its own reward. So now let me give you a scenario here. When is a normal throw better than the command grab? Command grabs are just as fast for the most part, do a heck of a lot more damage. Will win you the game a lot quicker. So when could it ever be better, right? Well, there is a few scenarios and it has to deal with people trying to trick you, right? So it's time to trick them back. So we already talked about strike throw mix up and this is a big part of it here. So I'll give you a couple examples, but let's start with Lily. So Lily, enhanced spire, as we talked about, is plus one. So once it's plus one, it's basically, okay, am I gonna start hitting you or am I gonna start going for my command grab, right? And the enemy has to guess. So let's say they guess, go for the command grab, go for the jump. So yes, once again, this would 100% defeat our command grab. And they'll land on top of her head and get a big combo, all that kind of stuff. And the combo's gonna do a lot more damage than that grab ever was gonna do, right? But now this is where the throw comes into play. So now say 
We go for a regular throw, right? They still avoid it, but what happens here is we will recover in time before they land on our head with that nasty combo. Specifically here, just for a beginner example, Lily. Whiff a throw, and then if you jumped, haha, eat Tomahawk Buster, an effective Dragon Punch analog, right? An uppercut that's invincible against jumping attacks. So if they stayed in place, we would have threw them. And, you know, we would have got a little bit of damage out of that, but if they tried to avoid it, we recover in time to punish them for attempting to get past our grab scenario. As you can see. Much the same here, just say they're in a the corner trying to jump out of the setup, right? We can just punish it on the other side. So you don't get as big of a reward, but you're also keeping yourself a lot safer in the end. If you go for a basic grab instead of your command grab and a strike throw mix if you're attempting to catch the enemy doing something. Now, as an FYI, your big brain play only works against jumps. So if they're going for like a level three super or something, you are just as done. That's not going to help you out there, right? No big brain play here. You just got. But still, it can help in quite a few scenarios. So let me show you a couple other examples. So Mano, she's working for the vacuum effect to go for the grab, right? So say they jump it. So we'll just go for a regular throw. And what can we get there? So in this scenario, after you get vacuumed here, We'll go for our regular throw, which we'll whiff, but we'll recover plenty fast enough. Oh, and then you tried to jump out. We can go for EX wheel kick. And if we can go for EX wheel kick in this scenario, that means we're getting the metal level regardless. So you tried to jump out to avoid Manon getting the metal level. Instead, you got smacked by the EX wheel kick, combo into the hit grab, and we got the metal level anyways. So this is a good scenario here for using throw over command grab if you feel they're very jump prone. And Zangief perhaps most valuable of all because he has a lot of really good regular throws. He has more regular throws than anyone else in the game. So the threat in the regular throw is not a bad thing because uh, he can do quite a few situations that like he's very dominant in. So that's good. So after we do our plus frames here, we'll go for the regular throw. And for Zangief of all people, like he's kind of tailor made for this. So if he goes for the regular throw and you jump, you just eat the level one. Like that's a basic example, but I think it's a hell of an example, honestly, because you're going to be eating a lot of damage. And for something a bit more mundane, you can still Lariat them. Like Lariat is partially invulnerable to jump attack, so that's going to be a pretty decent answer. Also, if you're quite quick and just want to be a little sassy, you can just air grab them out of it before they land on your head and get their kick off, right? Because you have the advantage frames. So yeah, this is a very simple concept, but it's a really strong one. The command grab is... Gonna be the right answer a lot of the time, right? But sometimes if you think someone's just a little too smart and a little too tricky for their own good, you can make them feel really extra stupid by calling them out. You get the throw if they stood still, maybe not as strong of a throw, but you still get the throw if they stood still. If they try to jump out, then you got your big brain play and you're gonna punish them for it. Now, this one's a bit more advanced. This is Zangief specific, because Zangief is the only character in the game with a 720 super. So how do we easily do a 720 super? Doing it standing? Well, go pick modern Zangief, right? I already went over in that video. Uh, there's very few people in the world that can do a standing 720. I am one of them. I cannot do it very often. And there's even less people that can do it consistently, right? So if you want standing 720s, go pick modern Zangief. But for everybody else, how do we do it? What we do is we hide it in the buffer. And Zangief is tailor-made for this, right? Because the motion does require a proper 720. It allows a little bit of sloppiness on the inputs. Like it will allow for diagonals in place of the cardinal directions a lot of the time. Cause like a regular pile driver has to, has to have to have a back down forward. It will not accept diagonals in its place, a 720 will. But basically, yeah, we hide it inside other animations. Like say for medium kick, the knee hammer. This is perfect. It gains Zangief space while threatening cause it is an active hitbox. And say if we do it and we land right in front of the enemy and say we, you know, just for fun, right? We put in that 720 while he's jumping across with his knee, right? And when we land, we hit punch. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen is right when we land, we get the 720. And this the whole point of this is to trick the enemy into thinking the attack is coming. And then when we land right in front of them without the attack, it's too late to recognize and we're good to go. We can do this in situations where we're advantage on block as well. Like say stand heavy kick for Zangief is plus one. So they might jump out because we talked about the whole strike throw mix earlier, but we can just hide it during the entirety of the animation as shown here. And there you go, right? 
because we're in the middle of the animation, we're not jumping. So therefore we get to get the super off. Perhaps the most classic way to do it is just jump. Zangief has always been blessed that his jump attacks are actually pretty decent all in all. So people kind of have to be scared and kind of have to defend themselves, right? So when they're scared and trying to defend themselves, just buffer that 360 motion inside that jump. And when you land, hit punch and you'll get that 720 off. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Just hide it inside any animation. And for Street Fighter 6 especially, it's actually perhaps easier than ever because you're given the drive rush. And a drive rush, you can't jump right away. You have to run a set amount of time. And during that set amount of time, you have to run. Maybe we buffer in a certain motion, right? So if they're worried about like drive rush attacks in various forms, because they will definitely be coming with Zangief, right? Instead of doing that attack, do something like this. And once again, with Zangief's level three, if they see the flash, it's already over. You're already gone. It's too late. You can't do anything about it, right? So there's a lot of ways to hide that long 720 input into a variety of different animations. You are expected to do it. If you're not playing modern, don't worry. Once again, you are expected to do it this way. It's designed and balanced around it. That's why if you do it the one button way in modern, you need a giant damage penalty. With classic, you get all the damage built in. You just gotta trick the input a little bit, hide it in something else. So now you know how to do 720s with Zangief. And those are some core tricks for you for command grabs in Street Fighter VI. The biggest thing I would say is be unpredictable and make sure you use those lights as well. I know the heavy grabs have the big damage. That's why we're all here, right? But the lights got big time range is what they got. You know, uh, they will snap people from ranges they think they're completely safe from because you are still not safe. So make sure to use those lights. Maybe you won't get as much damage in the end, but what you will get is the command grab and that's what we're looking for. So be dangerous, be random. Do random drive rush into command grab when they're not expecting it, expecting other buttons. Do anything you can to be unpredictable and unexpectable because that is the best time. When they smell the command grab, then you already screwed up. When they feel it's coming then they jump, they land. Trust me, they will do more damage to you than you would have done to them with the command grab if they jump and land on your head, right? So you gotta make sure they land and being unpredictable is a big part of it. So all that said, that's a little bit of command grab 101 for you in Street Fighter VI. So other than that, I guess, well, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Street Fighter.